I thought you guys know I'm gonna take a break for a really long time, but I'm okay and I'll be okay. I always am. <laughs> It was really, it was tense. She was mad at me and I said, I'm sorry, I'll not, I won't say anything again. I won't say anything again. That was Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash. Are they getting back together? I'm about to explain why it won't work. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you are new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health. And a huge part of our mental health is the relationships that we get into, the relationships that we get back into, the relationships that we pursue. That affects our mental health more than anything. So many people, so many people struggle with their mental health because they keep getting into bad relationships. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about two pretty big YouTubers, Jason Nash and Trisha Paytas. So, a few things, a few disclaimers real quick. The first one is, those of you who are new to my channel, I do not make these videos in any way to drag anybody, to talk bad about them or anything like that. I am somebody who gives tough love though, okay? But the goal of my videos is never because I think that they're gonna explode or even these big YouTubers are gonna see them. My videos are to help you. My videos are to help my audience. So when I talk about the mental health of different YouTubers and what they're struggling with, I hope that you can take lessons from it. I hope that you can take a step back, look at your life and say, oh, do I do these things? Am I somebody who's been you know, getting into bad relationships, how can I reevaluate what I'm doing and maybe improve my mental health? So these videos are to help you. The second disclaimer I'm gonna throw out there is, time is a very valuable and precious asset, especially for me, okay? Six years ago, I almost died. So the way I live my life, one of the ways that I keep good mental health is that I do not waste time. I refuse to waste time my time. So the reason why I'm saying that is Jason Nash and Trisha Paytas have made a lot of videos back and forth about their breakup, okay? And most of them are anywhere between 20 minutes on the low end, 40 minutes on the medium side, and over an hour on the high side. And in no way am I going to sit through and watch those, okay? I have skipped through, got the gist, read the comments, that's what I'm going to be taking and putting in here. So I'm not gonna have a million clips, I'm gonna use a couple, but that's it. I will provide the links to their videos down below. Maybe just a couple videos because there's a lot of them. But again, I am not going to waste my time watching it, especially when half the video is like this. I thought I was so sure I wanted to go earlier this morning and then... <sighs> Sorry, I'm chewing gum. So rude, but. So those of you who aren't all up in the YouTube drama sphere, like I like to do, <laughs> this is the, the too long, didn't read type gist of things, okay? Jason Nash is one of the friends of David Dobrik. David Dobrik is a huge YouTuber. He started out on Vine, very big. Jason Nash is part of his little fun bunch, okay? He's about 45 years old, hangs out with these kids. That, you know, go for it, man. You do you, okay? Trisha Paytas, she is somebody with millions of subscribers herself, and she makes a lot of videos. And I, I could do a million videos just about the mental health of Trisha Paytas alone, the symptoms that I see, not to give her a diagnosis, Diagnosis, but just what I see that she struggles with. But a lot of people do follow Trisha Paytas and she documents just about everything going on in her life. And sometimes it's pretty much a hot mess. And again, like when I go through this video, one of the reasons I'm making this video is because these two were me. Okay, I used to be this person. One of the reasons I started this channel is because I have a lot of lived experience being a crazy person. I have a lot of lived experience getting into terrible relationships, all right? So when I watch these things, now that I'm doing much better mentally, I watch them and I'm like, man, that used to be me. And hopefully, hopefully some people can learn from these lessons, okay? So anyways, what happened with these two is Trisha is a little on the heavy side. Uh, Jason, you know, uh, he works out and stuff like that, tries to eat healthy. And 
Trisha has said to him, you know, she can make fun of her weight, but please don't make fun of my weight. Please don't talk about my weight, okay? So in Jason's first response video, he talks about how he's had to tiptoe around the subject and he apologizes and all these things, talks about her diet and things like that. She gets very mad, upset, and he says, sorry, sorry, sorry. By the way, first big red flag. If a lot of your relationship is based around tiptoeing around different subjects, especially if you can't get it through your head what topics to not discuss or how to approach them properly, this is a huge red flag of when this relationship isn't going to work. So anyways, the reason this breakup happened was these two were doing some kind of show, uh, some kind of reality show, and Jason made a joke. Trisha gets really, really upset about this, and she makes a video, something along the lines of the title of he called me fat and in this video she is just a crying mess it's like an hour long and she's talking about how he called her fat and she can't change for him and you know she doesn't want to eat around him and she feels uncomfortable so one of these things is if you're if you're the person in the situation where you feel like this especially when it's a new relationship if you feel like this person doesn't accept you and your body and stuff maybe maybe it's not the person you should be dating but there's also the fact the fact, not opinion, the fact that you have a lot of work to do, okay? So for example, me, I've made some videos about my weight, my weight loss and stuff like that. This is 100% for me, okay? I realize that my body is a result of my choices, all right? I have to accept it. I do not get offended when people make fun of my weight or anything. Like even when people leave comments, I like laugh with them, like whatever, like you're not telling me anything I don't know. I am overweight. But if you're struggling with this, like you need to look within yourself and say, okay, how do I deal with this? Because it is an insane expectation to go around thinking that nobody's going to comment or say anything and, and stuff like that. If you don't like the way you look, start making small baby steps towards a solution. Now, part of this, this whole series going back and forth is how they talk about how they're so in love, they're so in love, they're so in love. She loves them so much. They've been together for six months, okay? About six months, I believe. They might've known each other a little bit longer, all right? now this this isn't something this isn't something I'm gonna you know diagnose I'm not a clinician or anything but when I talk about symptoms of different mental illnesses like when I talk about borderline personality disorder there are these extreme emotions right extreme emotions and one of those extreme emotions is I don't just like somebody I love this person okay and even if you don't have something like BPD it's something to watch out for because when you feel these intense emotions what happens is it clouds you to all of the defects of the other person because you just love the feeling of being wanted, okay? So not only are they saying that they're in love, but like Jason even got a tattoo of Trisha's name. And by the way, this is not mental health related, but like I'm not a very superstitious person, but getting a tattoo of your boyfriend or girlfriend's name is like, extreme bad luck just from what I've seen, all right? So anyways, after all these back and forths and stuff like that, we've slowly seen them start talking again, okay? A little bit here, a little bit there, things are calming down, and something they, they started talking about in these videos is that, you know, not only are they gonna meet up in Boston and things like that, and she's gonna hang out with his family and all that, but they say this, they say that one of the main issues with their relationship is that they film together. They're both YouTubers and when they make videos together, that's the source of the problem. So the first, one of the first issues I wanna point out with this is that, is that when you start to lie to yourself in this, in this deceptive way, like you pick out this really trivial, weird thing and you say, oh, that was the problem. And by the way, I've done it too, and I'm thinking about dedicating a week to all the terrible relationships I've been in and stuff like that, and a lot of it had to do with me and my thought process and my mental health. Make believing that the filming together was the issue. Let's say they're right. Let's say filming together was the issue. Well, these next clips that I'm gonna show you is them filming together. So that's another issue. When you acknowledge a problem, but then you still do it anyways. They literally film together in the same videos where they're talking about one of their main issues is filming together, okay? So whether they were in a, in a, a mental health space of self-deception or not, they are doing the exact thing that they said was a problem. And what happens with this is that you slowly start to do it thinking that you can do that toxic thing again and it won't be an issue and then 
the definition of insanity happens. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So like I said, I'm not gonna use a million clips, but I do just wanna point this out because there's a lot of self-deception with these two getting back together. But they don't know, they don't, they didn't, they, in their defense, they weren't privy to all the inside information that, like I was texting with you during that time. So I knew that, you know, and I also, they also, I also knew that you weren't gonna, I also knew that you weren't gonna like start spreading lies about me or anything like that. All right, so Jason Nash doesn't think that Trisha is running around spreading lies about him. That's cool, but let's take a look back at his very first response video and see how many times he thinks Trisha is lying. Care at all. She's perfect size for me. I do not care. I, I don't care what she looks like and the fact that she's twisting it this way to say that because I'm fat, because I'm gross, because I'm fat, because I'm, it's, it, it's just not true. To, this is the part in the, in her video that I isn't true or she changed. I apologize, that's another lie. I definitely apologize, I apologize several times. This is something that we do. I'm gonna link in the info card a video I did about the uh, the spoiled milk philosophy. And long story short, spoiled milk philosophy is this. Getting back with an ex is like, taking spoiled milk out of the fridge, drinking it, putting it back in the fridge, coming back to it days, weeks, or months later, pulling it back out and thinking it's gonna be good again. That is insane. And that's what we're watching here. And it's, it's an interesting part of human nature. So some of you know I work at a drug and alcohol treatment center and it's very common with drug addicts and alcoholics, but it's also part of human nature and it's very fascinating, but it destroys our mental health. And here's what I mean. You start to lie to yourself about the past. You start to minimize things. You say, oh, it wasn't that bad. Oh, no, I didn't mean it like this. Oh no, she wasn't really lying. Oh, okay, you know, and all these things, and maybe we'll never know who's lying, who's not. But when you start moving back towards that relationship, that bad relationship, and lying to yourself, it wasn't that bad. You know, things were okay, this is gonna work. Like, it's not, it's not. I often say this, when you think that you're gonna change somebody, when you think that you're gonna get in this relationship and wait for somebody to change, think about how hard it is for you to change. When is the last time you made a major life change? And I'm not talking about going to the gym, I'm not talking about dieting, I'm not talking about moving to a different city, I'm talking about like a, a pure like, personality change. Like, it is very hard. It is very rare for someone to go through this experience where they do this complete change. So when you're getting into a relationship and you're waiting around for the other person to change and bend and mold into the person you think they should be or they think they, the person they can be, you are wasting your time. And again, time is very valuable, all right? I often ask my clients, in groups, and there's 60 to 70 people in these large groups that I do. I say, how many people in this room have spent far too much time in a relationship waiting for the other person to change. And you see about 75 to 90% of the hands go up. Quit wasting time. We have one life to live, quit wasting time waiting for somebody to change. There are over seven billion people on this planet. Sometimes it's just the time to sit back and have this moment of clarity where you're like, oh my God, maybe this isn't the right person for me. Maybe I should spend my time looking for somebody else, okay? So in my opinion, my prediction, this is not gonna work. They're gonna break up again. They might break up multiple times and it's not gonna work out very well. So again, I ask you to look at yourself and see what's your experience with getting back with exes with lying to yourself, minimizing the toxic relationship that you were in, minimizing the past and the stories and the craziness and the chaos. How often do you do this and has it helped you or has it hurt you, okay? But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Make sure you click that little round subscribe button. And thank you to everybody supporting me on Patreon and helping me try to spread this message of hope for people to improve their mental health if you would like to support the channel on Patreon, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. Get out of toxic relationships, and I'll see you next time.